I think veterinarians put a large amount of weight on diagnostic imaging because our patients don't speak. We're dependent on the owners to tell us why they feel that their dog or their cat isn't quite right. We are faced with a puzzle, especially with unclear clinical signs and symptoms. We look at these clinical signs, figure out what is the best next test for it imaging-wise. Diagnostic imaging helps us kind of go searching, you know, do a fishing expedition is what we call it. We work in four modalities, radiographs, radiographs or x-rays, ultrasound, CAT scan or CT and MRI. These four modalities look inside the patient to try to figure out if there's anything structurally abnormal. I would say I'm very different. Okay. Recently, we had a dog come in because she had really low red blood cell count. And one of the first things that we do in a dog that has that condition was take an x-ray. Radiographs are x-rays. Radiographs form the basis of the majority of what we do at AMC in terms of diagnostic imaging. This dog had actually eaten what you can see is a metal coin. I can actually tell that this is the Lincoln Memorial on a penny. This has been sitting in the stomach for quite a while and the gastric acid has kind of eaten away at the metal. After 1982, these pennies, that's when the treasury switched to making pennies from copper to mostly zinc and that's what's causing the low red blood cell count, the anemia. In this x-ray over here, this dog actually had four corn cobs. <laughs> you can see that there's kind of these little black dots where the kernels were sitting in a corn cob. And on this x-ray, we were able to see a, a little toy that the cat had eaten in the shape of a star. A typical day in our department usually starts off with morning rounds. It's an opportunity for us all to see the cases. We go through the report. We literally pick at every single detail as radiologists do. Our radiology department does more than just read what we are given. Because we are veterinarians at heart and we are working on the floor with our other veterinarians, we play a huge role in deciding what the best test is. A lot of times we will get the referrals from veterinarians who have tried their best to work up a case as much as possible and once it kind of reaches a diagnosis beyond their scope, it'll come to us. What's the fastest way to get to an answer? Okay, no, no change, no, no closing in on the stifle just yet, because I doubt the stifle is, is the problem. I think the problem is behind the femur. It's fast paced. We get many of our cases from the emergency department that is running 24 seven. We have such a big caseload. We have such a high volume um, and high variety of cases. It guarantees this exposure to just about every disease process you can imagine. This is a dog that had chronic nosebleeds and we ended up doing a CT. He had a lot of material in the frontal sinuses. This is very classic for a type of fungal disease. CAT scans and MRIs allows us to see better contrasts, so we can tell structures apart that are very small. I can look at the soft tissues, the muscle, things like that, and then the bottom has been optimized so that we can actually evaluate the bone, so I can look at the skull. CT is absolutely crucial in diagnosing this type of disease, but also guiding next steps. I love diagnostic imaging because I feel like it's so integral to what we do in veterinary medicine. We really have to look at the patient as a whole. I think AMC has always been known as one of the premier specialty hospitals. You see patients and clients from all different backgrounds, all the different walks of life. It has that mix of academia and private practice where I can see a huge caseload. I'm a born and bred New Yorker, so I've known about AMC. You come to AMC when you really need help for your pet, and that's what we did when I was a kid. I'm just happy I can be a part of the group of specialists that make this place the special place it is today.